My favorite part of the day is sunset. Just about dusk when you can sit down and look over your day and see how it played out. See how today went and look over all the things that you've done and smile. Find those little moments that just made you happy. And that makes your day. All those little things. They all add up. And that's what creates our happiness. For me right now, it's sitting here in this amazing sunshine, looking at the sun just about to go behind the mountains and just contemplating how beautiful a day it was because it was simple and there was no drama, there was no pain. You know, just sweet serenity. And that's something to be thankful for. Though I know this generation and in, in these times, we're constantly looking for stimulation and noise and distraction. But I wonder, why are we looking for that? Why does everyone need this constant stimulation? Well, it comes down to, I believe, the fact that everyone wants to feel alive. Everyone wants to have some feeling, some emotion, some reaction some interaction with life and telephones and media and everything digital gives us this opportunity to play out these little reactions and have a whole story in our heads or, or arguments or whatever dramas we want to create and we're all doing it remotely through these little screens sometimes capturing we think a moment but truly if you're not in it and you're not looking around yourself and in the moment and with the people you love and interacting with truly organic, real things like people, you don't feel much. And that's why people scroll and, and scroll and look and search. It's like, what am I looking for when I pick up my phone? Sometimes I wonder like, oh, okay, I'm looking at the news. Okay, interesting. Nothing's really changed. Just more of the same same old shit. What am I looking for? Am I looking for some heartwarming story? Am I looking for some joy? Some, something to smile at? Something to share? But really? What am I going to find on that little contraption? Nothing. Nothing. You know it and I know it. But yet we keep on looking. It's this really crazed addiction. And that's why putting away the phone or any other device you're on is so important whether you choose two hours a day or three hours a day or five minutes whatever it is that you can start off with just put it down put it aside and actually go hide it somewhere go put it in another room that you're not going to walk into and then as you separate as you cut that umbilical cord walk around in your life in your day and look at the people greet the sun greet the day Express your feelings to someone close to you or just say, you know what, I love you. Or just thank you for making me this tea or, or smiling at me or telling me a funny joke. Whatever it is that makes you feel that you're truly there, that this day happened. It's not about documenting it. It's about living it and feeling it. And that's what I really want to guide young people towards is that living truly in the moment and being in your skin without all the distractions, without all the bells and whistles and, and all the things that just kind of pull you away from what you need to do. And that's to feel who you are and to comp contemplate that day, that moment, that time. Where are you today? What do you want to be doing? What's going to make you happy today? What do you feel like eating? What do you feel like looking at? What do you feel like? What do you feel like actually? Do you feel like singing? Do you feel like crying? Do you feel like you need to hug someone? Do you feel like you need to spend time with your pet and just exchange that energy? Or do you need to sit under a tree? Pick that apple. I mean, I'm surrounded by nature. So just sometimes taking off my shoes and standing in the grass, feeling it underneath the soles of my feet and just grounding myself for two minutes. Just to remind myself I'm here and this whole world around me is there at my fingertips to communicate back to me, to vibrate back to me the energy. You know, and 
you know, like I said, this is not some kind of like, oh, sort of spiritual talk. Truly, we are connected to nature. We are part of nature. We are in nature. Nature is in us. We are. We are. <laughs> we are embodied in this, in this space. And so trying to constantly stay in this mental world looking through screens, being on our phones. We're so disconnected that we forget the smell of a lilac. I don't know. that I love the smell of freshly cut grass. It's like one of my most favorite smells. Reminds me of my childhood. You can probably hear a tractor or someone cutting grass right now, actually, because I, I live near some farms. There's just something so immediate about touching something and then letting it touch you back. We forget about those things. And then you wonder why so many people are depressed or sad or lonely or lonely. You know, and the more we dig ourselves into these dark little holes that our screens provide windows into, and the, the more we disconnect ourselves from this incredible experience that's sa that we're saturated in actually it's around us but somehow we're able to like block it all out and just focus on one little thing and be upset about it or get you know enraged about something maybe something we read or someone's comment it doesn't matter closing that door shutting down that screen putting the end on that movie that's running in your mind and then opening your eyes to literally what's around you is the first step. There are lots of young people I think these days battling loneliness and like I said in one of my other videos I think it's because people don't know how to talk to each other anymore and that really comes down to practice, right? It's a muscle, learning how to talk to strangers, learning how to talk to new people. Um, you don't have to be in, let's say, super new situations or run to a different country or travel somewhere. you got to travel in your mind. you got to adapt to a new situation, a new person. A new person is like a new country or a new place. It's like an encyclopedia of new information, a whole life's knowledge in, in a living being presented in front of you. All you got to do is open up your mouth and ask, hey, how are you? Who are you? And listen. And in that interaction, in, it's like a dance that you do, learning, talking, giving, being. It's this incredibly fulfilling interaction that we need as human beings, as social, social creatures. It is so fulfilling that after that, you don't want to pick up your phone. You don't need to go stare at something. You've literally engaged with another creature that touch something inside you or reminded you of something or gave you an idea or inspired you or at least touched some emotion so that you felt something, whether it's a subtle smile or, you know, it's a little burning of jealousy or anger, whatever it be, you're human. And it then again allows you to deal with those emotions and ask yourself, okay, why did I react like that? Or why didn't I ask that? Or why was I too shy? Or was I a little bit too aggressive? All these things come out in our interactions. And the less we're talking to people, the less we're opening our minds and our mouths, the less we are living. You know, we need to come out of these cocoons. We need to come out of our own movies, out of our own stories that we create in our head and invite this otherness and to be open to others. You know, that is truly living. We didn't come to this earth alone. We came here together to be together. All of us right here, right now, we're here together so that we can share this energy and interact with each other because you have a missing piece that someone else is missing or that I'm missing or I might have one little piece of knowledge that you need to, fit, to finish your puzzle, to finish your thought. And I'm always open to that. And maybe when I was younger, I wasn't so good at listening. I just wanted to do and, and run around and be crazy and just, you know, have fun. But now I want to listen. I want to know, what did you do? What did you do to have fun? How did you enjoy your life? Where have you been? 
Where is the best place to drink coffee? By this lake or by the sea? Or what is the easiest mountain to climb? Where can I get started? Who should I talk to? You know, on my travels way before Google and Maps and all this shit, I literally would get an airplane ticket, show up, go to the tourist center, grab a map to get someone somewhat situated. And I love maps. Um, and what would I do? Who were my point of interaction or my point of knowledge? They were people. And I would have to ask someone, excuse me, where do you think I can get a good meal that's not too expensive? Excuse me, you look like, you know, you know what's going on. Where should I go out? Where's a good place to get a beer? Um, I don't know. Wh when, when is the next train to Rome or to London or to wherever you need to be? A lot of those things you couldn't find. You'd have to be like, okay, go there, go there. Oh, there's a schedule there. Oh, that's in Italian. Oh, that's in French or that's in Greek or whatever. And I would have to ask someone, can you please tell me what this means in English? And just those interactions and being able to approach someone with an open energy where they see, oh, I'm needed. I need to help this person. Actually extracted help from people. And that's practiced. That's making yourself vulnerable and allowing someone to do something for you, even though you don't know them. Allowing them to fill that hole, to give you that knowledge, to give you that little piece, that puzzle piece that allows you to move forward or see the bigger picture. And young people, they're so safe in their little cliques or they're so safe behind a screen or online or wherever it may be, but they're hidden. And I know because I'm raising two young people and they're afraid sometimes to go ask for help or ask someone for advice. And I push them. I'm like, you know what? You need something? Go ask the waiter. Go ask the bartender. Hey, can you go find out, instead of me looking it up on my phone, when does the next train leave? We're going somewhere. Why don't you let me know what's the best restaurant you want to go to? Why don't you ask someone? Ask someone. My kids are learning different languages. I myself speak a few. So I tend to put ourselves in situations where, hey, you know what? Why am I going to look at Google reviews? You know what? Let me just ask this guy right here. I think he knows the best place to eat. Look at him. He's smiling. He's got good energy. He's got good vibes. That is a way to read where you are. Read your world. Read the situation. And say, you know what? I feel drawn here. I think this person has something, something to tell me, some good advice to give me. And you follow your nose and you ask kindly and humbly and you are rarely refused. And you know what? If one door is not open, you knock on the next one. You don't give up. And it comes with practice. Don't be afraid. You need to speak. You need to talk. You need to practice, and you can't do that with a mirror. You can't do that with these holographic images that we see everywhere from our TV screens to our phones to wherever. You have to do it with a real, live, living, breathing, red-blooded human being. So if you do anything today, talk to a stranger. Or just give someone a compliment and say, hey, I love your t-shirt, or you look good, or just a smile. Something that breaks, breaks that, that distance so that we remember, hey, we're all here together. And actually, let that warmth that you, I always feel from the sun, that warmth actually shines through human beings too. It shines through people. I just want you to feel warm. I want you to feel the warmth that I felt and... You got to talk. So that's been my lesson, and that's why I'm talking. So I hope you talk to you today. Anyways, cheers, guys. Until the next time.